Hello, my name is Flint Postal. I live in Danville, Ohio, and there is no longer any room for me in Donald Trump's Republican Party. I first identified as a Republican at the ripe old age of seven years old. It was during George W. Bush's 2000 campaign for president. And I remember one Sunday afternoon after church, I asked my grandparents who they were voting for that year. And they told me that they were voting for Bush because Bush was a Republican. Although I didn't know what it meant, what that meant at the time, I knew from that moment on that I was a Republican. As I began to grow up and, and read and learn and explore the Republican Party and its history and its principles and its values, I found myself truly falling in love with the conservative principles that the Republican Party espoused. The party of Lincoln and of Goldwater and of Reagan and of Bush and their emphases on freedom and the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. At that young age, and for most of my formative years, I could never imagine not voting Republican. And then 2016 came. I should note that I'm a natural, should be a natural born member of MAGA. Grew up in a lower middle class family, white, blue collar, living in a county in Appalachia that had been devastated by years of job losses and the coal mines leaving and the manufacturing plants leaving. Um, someone who might fit in with what Barack Obama infamously called the bitter clingers. I should have been a natural Trump voter in 2016. But there were two things that held me back, character and authenticity. As a former Christian minister, I could not fathom voting for someone with as much personal baggage and as much lack of character as, as Trump. And I viewed him then as I view him now a fraud, Someone who did not have the values of the Republican Party at heart. Someone who only looked after themselves. So in 2016, in the primary, I voted for Ted Cruz. And in November, I wrote in Ben Sass. Because while I could not bring myself to vote for Hillary, I sure could not bring myself to vote for Donald Trump. When he was elected, however, I was... Cautiously optimistic for his presidency because I believed that there were guardrails in the House and in the Senate and in the Cabinet and among Trump's advisors. I believed that they would keep his authoritarian and antisocial and narcissistic tendencies in check. Boy, was I wrong. Time and time again over the last four years, I have seen people who I thought had character, people who I thought were strong conservatives, people who had party and country at heart, bow the knee and kiss the ring. Time and time again, I have been let down by my party and have watched it. No longer be the grand old party, but the party of Trump. A party that has embraced all the worst elements of fringe movements. White nationalism, Christian nationalism, the alt-right. I have seen Christians... So, so-called evangelicals time and time again bow the knee and put political power over the message of Christianity, of loving your neighbor, of helping the poor, of humility and mercy and justice. Donald Trump stands for none of those. He stands only for himself. This year, 
I can't do it. Even though I disagree with him on m most political issues, for me, character matters most. This year, I have a responsibility to put character and to put country above party. In 2020, I am voting for Joe Biden.